Okay. The second part here is we're saying if the ray cast or the laser, whatever you want to call it, hit something, then do the functionality here. Okay. So physics dot raycast. Physics is basically the the library that contains the raycast um, functionality. So what we're doing is we're going into the physics library and we're saying, hey, uh, make a raycast, and then if the raycast did hit anything, then do this functionality here. And the reason that we have these uh, brackets here is we're giving it the information of one is where to start the raycast, i.e. The, the finger point area on the screen, and the second one, the raycast hit, is the information of the object that the raycast did hit. So when you tap on the screen, it creates a, a ray, a ray or, or a laser, whatever you want to call it, straight down the camera. And then in the game world, if it hits anything, this raycast hit object will contain that information. So it will contain the information of, say, the name of the object that it hit, the, uh, the position of the objects that it hit, and then any other information that you want to get from, from that object that it hit. Okay? Now, the reason that we want to do that is because we want to know exactly where the player tapped on the screen and where it hit inside the game world so that we can move the paddle. Okay? So what we're saying here is if, if this laser did hit something inside of the game, i.e. hit a block or it hit some kind of wall, then what we want to do is move the position of the paddle to where that point hit. So basically where my finger taps on the screen, we want to move the paddle, okay? This transform.position.x, transform basically says that the, the transform, which is like the x, y, or z position, okay, of the object that the script is attached to. So right now we have a paddle. What we're going to do is put the script onto that paddle, and then that paddle will have a transform on it. That transform is basically the size information, the position information, and so on. So the transform position x, we want to make it the same as the raycast, <coughs> the raycast point x, which is basically where we where we tapped on the screen. So we're just basically wanting to say, hey, we want to move this paddle to the same position where that laser or raycast hit something in the game world, okay? Uh, if it doesn't hit, then we just basically exit out. So this is if is true. If it's not true, then just leave the function and don't do anything, okay? So I know that is that that's probably a lot to digest for someone who's never been coding before and somebody that's never ever um, even, you know, looked at code before. I know first time I looked at this, I was extremely confused. So, but bear with me, don't worry about this. You know, it will, you'll pick it up and just, if you start to copy code from tutorials and then start to tweak things, you start to understand how it works, okay? So all I'm gonna click on is File and Save, okay? Then I'm gonna go back into Unity by clicking on the Unity icon, okay? Or the Unity, at the bottom of Windows, you have your taskbar. Uh, and what this will do is, uh, you can't actually see it here very clearly. I'll try to move Unity up a little bit. Um, but what we have here on the bottom right is a little sort of spinning icon which, which is checking the script for any errors. It's compiling the script. So I'm just going to go back into Monday Develop. I'm just going to make a space and click Save again just so you can see it. And when I go back into Unity, bottom right, there we go. So it's checking. There's no errors. That's fine. Okay. So the next thing that we want to do is we're basically going to put... Uh, we're going to go to the cube. We're going to click on it in the hierarchy which selects it inside of the game, the game scene. Okay, and what we're going to do is grab and drag this paddle script that we just created onto the cube. Now, this inspector area here is everything that is inside the cube. So, like we said, it has a transform which contains the information, the scale, the rotation, and so on. It also has a couple of other things that I won't explain right now, but basically, whenever you select an object inside of the hierarchy, the inspector will show all of the components that are inside that object, okay? So, like I say, I'm not going to explain everything right now, but let's just drag, left, left click, and then drag this paddle object down here and let go. And it actually puts it on there, okay? Now, to play the game inside of Unity, what we need to do is just click on this play button here. And this is basically the same as, as having it play inside of a web player, like on Internet Explorer or on Chrome. Um, it's, it's close to how it would be if you, if you wanted to basically, if you're building a mobile game like we are doing here, it will show you what that will look like on the mobile device. So 
latency. This is what the game scene would look like. And when you click play, it's almost like you're tapping on the application button and you're opening it up and you're starting to play it. So it's just a very fast, convenient way to to test the game inside of the editor because when you build out to say a, an iPhone or an Android, you have to wait for that to build, compile, deploy onto the device and it takes a long time for that to happen depending on the game size. So this is a really quick and easy way to do it. Okay. So if I tap on the screen now and I'm just I'm just left click tapping, there's nothing happening. Okay. Um, uh, in fact, there is something happening right now because what we're doing is we're tapping on the we're actually tapping on the paddle itself. Okay. Um, and what's happening there is the Raycast is shooting down the camera. It is hitting the paddle on, say, the left-hand side of the paddle, and then it's moving the paddle middle position to where that point was. So, for example, if I'm, if I'm tapping here on the paddle, it's then moving the middle of the paddle to the point that we, that we hit. Okay? But the problem is, if we tap anywhere else on the screen, we, we don't get that functionality because it's not the laser is not hitting anything. Okay? So what we want to do is we want to put something behind the game scene that allows the laser to hit, that, that the laser will hit. And then we can have the position information of where the player taps. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another cube. So I'm going to go game object, create other cube. And you can see it's appeared on the, in the game scene here. Okay? Uh, I'm just going to click on the cube and press enter. And I'm going to call this tap detection box. Okay. I'm also going to go in here into the collider and I'm going to click on is trigger and make that tick. Um, I'm not going to explain to that all of that right now, but it basically means that it's not a physics object in the world. It's just going to, it's just going to uh, allow scripts or code to interact with it. So right now, don't worry about this. Just, just clap on, tap on is trigger because that's a whole different explanation. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this back by holding, uh, if you tap on W and then holding the yellow arrow and left dragging and I'm using the mouse, uh, you can scroll with your middle mouse to zoom out as well or zoom in. Okay, and then moving it back and then I'm going to click on R and I'm going to grab the middle grey box here and I'm going to drag, hold and drag this out so it's large. Okay, very, very large in the scene. Okay. Now, obviously, we can't see anything in the game scene here, so that's a problem. We want to hide this because all it is is a tap detection box, just where the finger taps or where the mouse taps. It's not going to be anything visual. So if you go into the, click on the tap detection box, then go into the inspector, and then just tap on mesh renderer and turn that off. And that just basically says, don't render this object. Don't show this object in the scene. Okay. Now, if we tap on play... And as you can see, what we're doing is it's moving anywhere that I tap on the screen now, okay? Which is exactly what we want for a Pong paddle. Um, if I tap over here, it goes instantly to it. If I tap on the right, it goes instantly to it. And I can drag left and right, which is great. You know, that's exactly what we want. So now, just to quickly show you how this works, if I click on, uh, like we said before, if we click on Command and B or Control and B on the PC, this will actually deploy it into the web browser so that you can see it. So it builds the level, it compiles any scripts that are inside of the game, okay, and then it's going to basically, if I click on Chrome, there we go, it's building, and there we go, it's opened, and it should move, there we go, left and right, and that's exactly what we want. And you can tap anywhere on the screen because that box that we made in the background is a lot bigger than the, the screen itself, which is fine, there's, no, there's nothing wrong with doing that. Uh, if the box was too small, then if I tapped on a particular area, the paddle would not move to that area. Okay, So that's great. So we've basically got our paddle moving um, just like we wanted to. And so this is the end of part two. Uh, and then in the next video, I'm also going to work on things like getting the ball moving around the scene. So tune in for part three, everyone. Uh, and please leave some comments down below if you have any questions. I know this has been pretty complicated especially for any beginners, but I'm going to keep it as simple and as easy as possible for everyone, okay? So, uh, but yeah, thanks for, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.